of Jesus Christ but right now we are approach our time about finances I'm going to speak to you from a scripture in John chapter 2 now both Jesus John, uh, John chapter 2 verse 2 now both Jesus and his disciples were invited to the wedding and when they ran out of the wine the mother of Jesus said to him they have no wine and Jesus said to her woman you shouldn't be drinking in the first place and that's not what the Bible says <laughs> just paying it and just trying to check if you're listening woman what does your concern have to do with me my hour has not yet come and his mother said to the servants, whatever he says to you, do it. Uh, I want to speak to you before we pick up an offering about faith and finances. So this is a story. Uh, Jesus gets invited to the wedding and these weddings lasted more than just a few hours. Historically they lasted a few, few days, I think seven days or something. And so next thing that happens is that during this wedding they run out of wine. And topic today is not about whether this wine was intoxicating or not uh, we'll leave that for another day but they run out of wine and then Jesus come, mother of Jesus comes to Jesus and says Jesus you have to do something because they don't have wine and we see what Jesus says um, what do I have to do with this and he says it's not my time yet and mom of Jesus as though like she doesn't hear that she just tells the servant says be ready anytime he says something to you because his time can change and the next second it did and the time of Jesus changed he gave them a command they followed through that command and next thing that happened is they had not just a juice they had some really expensive wonderful exotic uh, luxurious drink that they were partaking now I want you to I want to draw a few thoughts before we receive an offering this morning one is that the fact that Jesus' mother had faith in Jesus not only to meet the needs but to also provide for the luxuries. Remember this is the first miracle of Jesus. In the first miracle he could have easily healed the blind, healed the deaf, raised the dead. But Jesus decides on his first miracle to do something that is not a necessity. They had water. Jesus could have easily when they ran out of the wine came to his mother and said listen woman there are children in Africa they do not have drinking water. Imagine right now there's people do not have drinking water. 2,000 years ago nobody had good drinking water compared to now. Imagine people dying because they don't have drinking water and the Son of God comes on this earth and His first miracle is going to be to create a luxury because wine is not a necessity, it's a luxury. He chooses His first miracle to be a miracle to be something that people don't need, something people want. He could have easily replied to Mary and say, Mary, I refuse to make a miracle of giving people something they don't need. Let them drink H2O. It's good for their immune system. It's good for their blood and it's good. It will cleanse them. But she had faith that somehow this Jesus who came to die for humanity will do a miracle of giving them something that they don't need. Giving them something they simply want. I want you to have faith that God will meet your needs financially but most of us are there already I'm going to challenge your traditional thinking have faith that God will meet your dreams if your fear is that God it's not right for God to bless me with a new car when half of the world don't even have a vehicle you should tell God why did he clothe lilies of the valleys in a better way than Solomon was able to clothe himself while half of the world do not have something to wear. Why did God clothe the grass that get cuts every week and thrown into the garbage so beautifully when so many people in the world do not have something to eat? See God is not religious. God is not traditional and the way you have faith in God will limit him in your life if you have faith in God who can meet your need that's exactly how you will see him in your life but if you have faith in God that say the only way God can bless the people who are struggling is if I get blessed how does God supply the needs of people who don't have anything do you think that a FedEx gets shipped them from heaven no it's people yet like you and me who prosper and then have extra and are able to help others 
It's people like our church who went to CBC and raised money and went to India and built a well so people in India couldn't have cleaning water. But if people in Tri-Cities wouldn't have enough funds, people in India wouldn't have the water. One of the ways God can supply the needs of others is by blessing you. But many times we have a fear inside of us that only limits God to meeting our needs instead of fulfilling our dreams. Look at lilies of the valleys. If you cut a lily, it lasts about three, three to two days and then it fades away. Jesus said Solomon in all of his wealth and riches was never able to afford the kind of dress that lilies have. This is your God. Jesus' first miracle was not healing someone, not providing for someone's needs, meeting somebody at the area of their dream. Have faith, not just for your needs, for your dreams. Maybe a dream to have a business. Maybe a dream to build an orphanage. Maybe to dream to have a certain car. Maybe a dream to have your own house. Maybe a dream to give someone a car. That dream, God can meet you at the point of that dream. Can somebody say amen? amen. Another aspect of this is God's timing. I want you to see this, that while Mary had this dream and this faith that she had in Jesus was that Jesus will do this. Now where does she get this faith? This faith that Jesus will meet this need did not come from the fact that Mary seen Jesus do the same thing in the house. There are, there are uh, writings about Jesus that Jesus did miracles when he was a teenager, when he was a little boy that you know that he would go in the pool and then quickly swim to the other side in a second. You know there's all of these speculations but all of these speculations are nothing but speculation because in here it says the first miracle Jesus did was when he was at the wedding. That means nothing before that was supernatural in his life. That tells us that for 30 years of his life Mary has never seen Jesus bend a spoon with his mind. She has never seen Jesus create water out of the wine or wine out of the water. So where does she have the faith now at 30 years of age that he is able to do that? Because she didn't base her faith on what she saw Jesus did. She based her faith on what God said before Jesus was born. I want you to know something about your finances. You may have never seen God move in the area of your finances before. Maybe this has been like this for three months, three years or maybe unfortunately for a more extended period and you lose your faith. Let Mary inspire you today. Do not base your faith on what God did not do. Base your faith on what God has said. He is Jehovah Jireh, your provider. He is the Lord my shepherd who, and because of that I will not have any needs. He is Jehovah El Shaddai, the God that's more than enough. He is the God who said, I will meet your needs according to my riches and your glory. Believe in God's word when you do not see God's works. Do not let the fact that maybe you've been tithing and things got a little bit harder. You've been giving and things got more difficult. Don't let that shake your faith. Because if that would have shaken Mary's faith, listen, imagine 30 years of not seeing miracles. Yet Mary believes Jesus is able out of nowhere create a miracle. And he did it for Mary. He will do it for you. Mary was her mother but you are God's child. And Jesus will do a miracle in your finances in Jesus name. Can somebody say amen? God's timing is so peculiar because faith believes in what God says but many times there is timing of God that is very confusing and, and here we see a timing of God where Jesus said I will do it but it's not my time and Mary does not get shaken up by that. If your faith in your finances to be strong you must keep your 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 faith in the God's character not in God's clock. Why? Because God's character never changes. God's clock always ticks. Always changes. We see in here Jesus says not my time and Mary does not get oh okay never mind guys scratch the idea let's go back to bring H2O we're gonna drink water. No she brings the servants she says come here guys be ready. Why? Because his clock always changes. Be ready when it does so you will be close enough to hear the instructions of what he's going to say. Encourage yourself with this. God's time always changes but God's word doesn't. In the area of your finances, God will never change. 
his time will that means today might not yesterday might have not been the time to bless you today will be the time to bless you today will be the time to bless you can somebody say amen one more thing about God's time we see in here what triggered God's time for a miracle what moved the clock because Jesus clearly stated not my time to do this miracle and then he switched and he did the miracle instead of focusing on God to change his time we have to position ourselves and ask this question what does he want me to do right now because Mary said whatever he says you do it and Jesus told them right away bring the water put it into jars and when they did that the Bible says now his time for a miracle came because the miracle was created before God's time for a miracle comes will first come your time for obedience your time of obedience always precedes God's time of miracle your time of obedience always comes before God's time of a miracle and sometimes your time of obedience doesn't make sense because the servants looked at the fact that they needed to pour water we want wine and he's asking us to pour water into the jars and it doesn't make sense how can wine come out of this same thing in the area of our finances when we are asking God for a miracle and God puts on our heart to be obedient to him to give and to be generous not to steal and not to do this and that and we look at that we're like how could giving a hundred dollars out of a thousand can help me prosper because from what I stand it looks like if I give 10 percent I'm gonna have less of 10 percent not more remember God's obedience doesn't always make sense it's fine because only that kind of obedience produces miracles that don't make sense we all want miracles that don't make sense and obedience that does miracles that don't make sense always come out of obedience that doesn't make sense we all want God to bless us with things that you just don't have an explanation for my friend first comes obedience that sometimes you don't have logical explanation for I want to challenge every person here today. I want to encourage your faith. Be like Mary. God will meet your needs but God will fulfill your dreams. Maybe not now, maybe tomorrow. Do not be confused with God's timing and be faithful with your time of obedience. Obey God when it's not easy. Obey God when it doesn't make sense. Obey God when the voices come in and say, you know what, this won't work. What, 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 what's going to happen out of this? Obey God still and you will see in the process of obedience when the water turns to wine, when your dreams become real, when your needs get mad, when God help you to pay off your debts, when God help you to give you creative ideas and creative deals, when God gives you promotions, when God gives open doors for new jobs that bring less stress, give you better working hours, help you to take care of your family, when God begins to give you just these breaks in finances where you will look back and say God it's been good and God will look at you and say we work together. Can somebody say amen?